Algebra 1, 11.7a, the Pythagorean Theorem, Legs and Hypotenuse. Let's take a look at this picture here. You can see the long side of a right triangle is the hypotenuse, and the other two sides are legs. So the longest side of a right triangle is called the hypotenuse, and it's always the side that's opposite of the right angle, the angle that's 90 degrees. So we can see the 90 degree angle there, the little square box, and you can see that the hypotenuse is on the opposite side of the triangle. See? It's around the opposite side. The other two sides are called the legs of the triangle. We have a leg here, a leg here, and the hypotenuse. And A and B are usually used to label the legs, and C is used to label the hypotenuse. The Pythagorean theorem says in any right triangle, if A and B are the lengths of the legs and C is the length of the hypotenuse, then A squared plus B squared equals C squared. All that means is if we have the length of this leg and the length of this leg, if we multiply this as a square, so if this is a 2, this would be 2 times 2, it would be 2 squared, and if this was a 3, it would be 3 times 3, it would be 3 squared, it would be a 9, wouldn't it? And that would tell us what the hypotenuse is. So this picture shows the relationship between the legs and the hypotenuse of a right triangle. So if we look at this very closely, we can see we've got A, B, and the hypotenuse C. And we can see this is three units, this is four units, one, two, three, four, and this one has one, two, three, four, five units, see? And if we put perfect squares around each of the sides of this right triangle, just like this, you know, with the yellow triangle in the center, we can see that 5 times 5 is 25, 4 times 4 would be 16 for the area of this one, and 3 times 3 would be the area of this one, right? When we know the length of any two sides of a right triangle, we can find the length of the third side. So it actually ends up breaking down like this picture. If this side's 3 and this side's 4, then that side's 5. And these are the only few numbers that do that. It doesn't do that with any number. You can't say 4, 5, 6 or 7, 8, 9. It doesn't do that. Just 3, 4, and 5 happen to work out that way. So if a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and if a is a 3, then we'd have 3 times 3, that's a 9. And if B is a 4, we'd have 4 times 4, that's a 16. And if C is a 5, then we'd have 5 times 5, and that's 25. And we can see we've got 9, 16, and 25 for our, our side. See that? For each square. We can rearrange this formula to fit our needs. So if we know what the hypotenuse is, and we know what c squared is, we can go the other way and we can take away the a squared to figure out what the leg b is, or we could take away b to find out what the leg a is. See? So we can find the length of the hypotenuse, and remember that's the longest side. Remember, if we've got a, b, and c, so let's say a is 4 and b is 5. That means we have 4, four times 4 here, don't we? That's a 16. And if b is a 5, that means we have 5 times 5 because it's squared. So we have 25. So that means c has to be a 41. But we have to square it because a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So to square 41, what we do is we take the little 2 exponent off the c and put the radical sign around the 41. We've talked about that before. You can go back and forth between a square with a 2 exponent and the square root symbol by either adding the 2 exponent or removing the radical sign. See? It takes it off or puts it back on. See? So what we do is we say, okay, what's the square root of 41? Well, the best way to do it is to figure out what perfect squares it's between. 36 is a perfect square because that's 6 times 6. And 49 is a perfect square because that's 7 times 7. So the square root of 41 is somewhere between 6 and 7. So it's a decimal. So 
We estimate an amount until we're close, and then we use the approximate symbol because the amount isn't exact. So we could try 6.2 times 6.2, or 6.7 times 6.7, and if it's too big or too small, then we move to a different number. And I came up with 6.403. I could have even rounded it to 6.4. See? And then I used the approximate symbol. See how I did that? And we can find the leg the same way. If we know that side A is a 1 and the hypotenuse is the square root of 7, well, then we do 1 times 1 plus B squared equals the square root of 7 squared. See? And all this means is the square root of 7 times the square root of 7, which is the square root of 49. And the square root of 49 is a 7. See? So if you see the square root symbol like this, it means you need to square it like this, but technically you could just take off that radical sign and that's your answer, okay? Just be careful if there's a fraction underneath there, okay, so that you know what you're doing. So 1 times 1 is a 1, 1 plus b squared equals 7, and we can just use additive inverses, can't we? We take, the way, take away the 1 from this side, we take away a 1 from that side, and we get b squared equals 6. So that means b is equal to the square root of 6. See how we took off the exponent and added the radical sign? Well, the square root of 6 is in between the square root of 4, which is a perfect square, which is 2, and the square root of 9, which is 3. So our answer is in between a 2 and a 3. So we can estimate and multiply amounts until we're very close, and then we'll use the approximate symbol because the number isn't exact. And we horse around and we try 2.2 or 2.6, 2.5, and I came up with 2.449. Now I also could have said 2.4 or 2.45 if I had rounded it, right? But all you have to do is find out which two perfect squares it's in between to get yourself started, and then pick a decimal from thereafter, like... If you know it's in between 2 and 3, try 2.4, and then go up a little bit more and see if it works, okay? And we can cut an isosceles or equilateral triangle in half. We can divide it in half to find a hypotenuse. So if you have an isosceles or equilateral triangle and it says find the hypotenuse, just put a division line, splitting it right down the middle here, so it's symmetrical on each side, and now this side ends up becoming the hypotenuse right? And if it says the base is a 10, well, then this leg would be a 5 because it's only half of it, right? We can even do that with a square. In a perfect square, the legs are all the same. If this is the square root of 2, then that's the square root of 2, and that's the square root of 2, and that's the square root of 2. And the square root of 2 squared means square root of 2 times square root of 2, which is square root of 4, and we would do the square root of 4 plus the square root of 4, see? Square root of 4 is a 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. See? And we can figure out what the hypotenuse is here because a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we would know that the diagonal is a 4. See? And even if you had to split it up even more, you could take a perfect square, and if this is a 4, and that's a 4, We can do the diagonal here, see? And you could even do it again, and you could even do it again, and you could even do it again, couldn't you? You could just keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller if you wanted to. So the next video, 11.7b, we're going to actually use graph paper and talk about the distance between two points in a coordinate plane. And of course, like always in this playlist, for Algebra 1, any of the previous videos that you may have missed or you'd like to review, all the links are in this description, okay? So if you missed any of these, they're just one click away, all right? Fill in any holes for anything that you've missed, and you'll have a better chance of getting a good grade, okay? All right, I hope this was helpful, and I'll see you next video. Bye.